Hey team, and welcome to the video version of the Funnily Enough podcast. This is where you get the raw, unedited version of the interviews that we do on the show. If you're more of an audio person, then head over to Apple Podcasts or any of the platforms that you like that supports podcasting, and you can listen to the fully edited thing there with intros, outros, and all the fun little jingles. However, if you're more of a video person, then that is coming right up. Mark Asquith, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? I am very good, thank you. How are you? I am great. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's um, For those of you that have been listening to the podcast so far, Mark is one of the guys behind the scenes that has been kindly helping me with a lot of the stuff that I just do not know when it comes to podcasting. And so I want to use this time that we have with him to learn a little bit more about this podcasting thing and if there's anyone out there that wants to start a podcast is interested in podcasting then mark is your man so mark with that in mind let's get let's get stuck into the important serious stuff what's your feelings towards odd socks do you wear them or is it a strict no no i'm an odd sock maestro like my odd socks are that odd that they've become normal so you have just completely gone odd sock it's it's a funny one i i uh used to hate the idea of odd socks and i, I would wear like monday socks on a monday tuesday <laughs> socks on a tuesday uh, but something happened I, I don't know what but now i wear you know like ankle socks with knee high socks occasionally <laughs> just <laughs> mate it's the only way forward i feel like if you can get your head around wearing odd socks you can pretty much conquer anything because there is that little uh there's that little bit of nutter inside all of us. Like we're all a little bit odd. And I think the odd socks, once you get over that, you can conquer anything, dude. Yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. And do you know what? I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's 100% because I'm lazy. Yeah. You know, everything out the washing machine or whatever. And you're just like, nah, not happening. No chance am I pairing these up. There's better things to do in my life. No chance. I totally agree with you. <laughs> if, if, the, if the listeners take one thing away from this podcast is if you want to be successful, Wear odd socks, all right? Okay, Mark, podcasting. I'm just going to ask a very wide open, blunt question, which is, should business owners have a podcast? I think the short answer to that is yes. And ordinarily, a few years ago, I'd have said yes, but only if they can keep it up. But I think that's changed very, very recently. And I Actually, do you know what? It's not even that recently. I'm just getting old. Time's flying. It's since it's become a lot easier to do seasonal shows and one-off shows, thanks to some of the new tags that we've got available to us. Fact, thanks to the fact that we can mark things as a, as a one-off season, for example. It's become very, very easy. And I've experimented with this myself and my own content. Very, very easy to do a one-off piece of content. So like Andrew and Pete, they'll do a season of their show. I've done courses. So I've got one podcast that's just one RSS feed. It's got eight episodes. That is it. I'll never do any more on that. It's just, it's fixed and it's set. Um, so yeah, short answer, yes. But with the caveat that it's got to be a format that you can maintain. And if you can't maintain it, that's fine. Just understand that, but make it a fixed point. Make it a fixed season, a fixed thing that you can then consistently market. I think that's, that's the only caveat that I'd throw in there. Okay, so, so with that in mind, because I'm probably of the, or have been of the mindset that a podcast is one of those things that you show up every single week, you record a podcast every single week, you upload it every single week, forever. So with that in mind then, if talking about creating one-off shows or seasons, how, what's the shelf life of a podcast? So if I am a business owner, I post it today, in a year's time, will that still be giving me benefit? So for example, if we, if we post a video on YouTube, you can kind of be sure that a, a video posted to YouTube, maybe in a year's time, will still be getting traffic, still get people watching. On Facebook, maybe slightly different. What's that look like for a podcast? I think it's a very similar thing. And I, again, I think this has changed ever so slightly over the last few years because you've got Google now getting into the game. You've got Spotify now getting into the game. So I kind of... I'll answer that in, in, in two small parts. Number one, you've got to think about TVs, movies, and serialized dramas. So what I'm talking about here is 
three levels of video content that we all watch on TV. Is The Godfather still of benefit to people? Of course it is, but it was released once. Mm. Coronation Street, on the complete other end of the spectrum, comes out, from what I can tell, approximately 73 times a week. It comes out all the time. It's literally on like every day or something. It's just constantly, constantly on. Never stops. But you've got TV shows like, I don't know, The Office. You've got The Jack Ryan Show on Prime. You've got anything on Netflix that drops in a season. So you've got this range of TV shows. And it's the same thing for podcasts, in my view. They're a little bit different to videos on YouTube because I think videos on YouTube are certainly seen as, okay, here's a video. Whereas with a podcast, I do think you can say, well, here's a one-off, here's a season, and the season will come back in three months, or here's this ongoing thing that I'm going to do. Now, as long as you set the expectations with that, and you're not a little fluffy with it, you're not saying to people, well, you know, I'm kind of going to do, I'm going to do every week. And then in a year's time, you're like, well, I'm kind of going to do once a month. Like that, that doesn't fly. Okay. You've got to keep the expectations solid. And that's why it's always easier to start with a one-off then build up to a seasonal show. And then if you want, build up to a weekly show, unless you're sure that you can commit to it. So that's kind of a, a preface to the, to the actual answer, which is, yes, it will be of benefit to you moving forward. And the reason for that is very recently, and I mean very recently as we're recording this, some big players have really got into the space. Obviously, Apple are in the space, but Google and Spotify are now in the space. And Google in particular, are doing a heck of a lot around this. So what they're doing now is they're actually um, displaying, if you talk to Zach and the team at Google, they're experimenting with with, with transcription of podcasts on the back end. We'll never see the transcription as podcasters, but what what will happen is that that audio content will get indexed. So if I search for... You know, let's use um, let's use a dead simple example of, of of how to how to build a Facebook funnel. How do I start with Facebook ads? If you've got an episode around that that's then transcribed, there's as much chance of your podcast episode, not your show, just the one episode, appearing at the top of the search listing. So yes, long term, it can have huge benefits because the real fun thing with that is you're appealing to people that are searching on the go. Who, who learn differently. Like I'm not a video guy. There's only a few people that I, that I follow when it comes to videos. Your Instagram is one of them. Um, I liked your influencer posing, by the way. I thought you nailed that. <laughs> and, but I'm an audio learner. I listen in the car driving to work. So yes, massive long-term value if you plan it properly. Wow, that's so, that's so interesting. And, and actually, what I, what I find really interesting about this is so I had somebody recently in the, in the academy, the Funnel Academy, leave. And one of, the, one of the pieces of feedback that they gave in the, in the end of like, the, the cancellation um, survey was that they had hoped or they wanted audio lessons. So it's all video lessons in the academy, but they wanted audio lessons because they were an audio learner. And I never knew anything about well, for, first of all, we've got that. So people are starting to, or have always, but the technology is now there to learn via audio, not just written and visual. And then you've got the, what you mentioned about almost SEO becoming a thing with podcasting in terms of if Google are starting to transcribe, the, th- the things that you talk about now in a podcast are going to be found. Like it's, it's quicker to do a podcast episode on what is a Facebook funnel than write a blog post about it, which is great from a business owner point of view when, when we all have lack of time. And then I just think about my flat, like where I live. I've got an Alexa in every single room. Pretty much all the lights are controlled by Alexa. Everything seems to be going towards voice. And podcasting just seems like, although there, there, a few people believe that podcasting is an old fashioned thing. Someone actually messaged me on LinkedIn the other day saying this, but actually everything for me seems to be pointing towards podcasting being like at the very early stages of its lifetime journey, whatever you want to call it. So it's fascinating, but, and, and when it comes to podcasting and I see you as like the go-to person, which is really cool for you. So I want to ask you a question about that. Because I was having a look at your website and I love how you've got that timeline uh, of your, your journey since back in 2001. 
and you were kind of moving away from podcasting here a little bit. You said back in 2001 that you delivered pizzas. So I want to know back then, how, how was that? Did you, when you were delivering pizzas, did you have in the back of your mind goals that you were going to become known as a, like a specific, whether it's podcasting or not, did you have goals to be a well-known influencer, whatever you want to call it? Did you know what you wanted to achieve or were like, tell me about that time in, in your, in your life? You know, I've only ever had one goal. Um, and I, honestly, I don't care about being an influencer. I don't care about my Twitter following. I've literally got a verified tag on there so that when people Google it, they're like, oh, that's the right guy because there's an yep. accountant in Liverpool and he's a nice guy as well. But I want people to see, actually, that's Mark. That's why on my site, it's that British podcast guy. And yep. it's Mark Asquith. If you notice on my personal brand site, it's Mark Asquith, the CEO of Rebel Base Media. It's not Mark Asquith, the influencer. It's Mark Asquith, but look over there at what the company's doing. You yep. know, it's, it, that's very much a, uh, a tactic that I employ just to make sure the company gets the limelight. It's not just, it's just not just all me. Um, and, and, and that's, that's really through the fact that that is not my goal. Like my goal genuinely is to work, enjoy working and then forget about work. Like literally go out and just live and just have a nice life. And at, right at the crux of that, and I, I did a, I was lucky enough to do a TEDx talk. They asked me to do a TEDx talk in Coventry and I called that choose happiness, choose control. And that has been my only goal, dude, which was to always have control over how I lived, whether that's delivering pizzas, doesn't matter what it is. Yep. And it was, it was a funny one when I was, you know, back in those days, I didn't really have any goals, but at the same time, subconsciously I did. And it was just like, I was never cognizant enough to understand, okay, step by step, do this, do that to achieve this goal. It was always just look, as long as I'm not being controlled by external forces. So like pizza delivery at age 19, 20, I was doing that alongside another job as well. Like that was easy. I turn up, no one told me really what to do. Sure. I had to take things to places. Didn't matter how fast I got there, how slow I went, what route I took. I got a bit of banter with the people there. So it was this freedom, yep. you know, that's what it was. Um, and then on the back of that, I just kept saying yes to stuff and trying stuff out. So it was like, Oh, do you want this office job? Uh, sure. If you want. And then do you want this promotion? I mean, I guess if you want, I'm not really interested, but seems to be all right. And then it was suddenly when that became a controlling factor, that's when I left that. So it was like, actually, okay, if you want this promotion, you've got to do all these things we're saying. I'm like, nah, I'm out. Yeah. So it was, that was the only goal. Like being an influencer is just, I wouldn't even say I'm an influencer really. I just, I just know people and I just try and help as many people as possible. And, um, that's just more of a personality trait, I think, than a goal. Yeah, I think the influencer term is quite interesting because, I mean, I would deem you as an influencer in that you have an audience around podcasting, which you influence their decision. But like you say, you certainly don't come across as that guru type influencer that calls themselves calls himself an influencer. So being that British podcast guy, does how, like did that term and not necessarily the term but the idea of you being the podcast guy how some people might call me the facebook ads guy was that a almost a tactic for you was that as in naming yourself that was it something that somebody once called you and you coined it like what so that, that that's one part of the question the second part of the question is has having that tag benefited you in your business yeah a couple of kind of good questions with that dude um so i'm a huge fan of of networking and 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 but doing the right sort of networking so we just a very very short history we've got rebel based media which owns like five podcasting brands we own podcast websites productivity captivate podcast success academy and a recording studio and strategy and all sorts of other bits. Each one of those things, it, it, it's, it's happened in a linear fashion. So we didn't launch with all these things. We started with podcast websites. And I literally, literally walked the beat, dude. I was like, at the conferences all over the world. That's why everyone says to me, how come you're everywhere? Well, guess what? I buy a ticket and I bloody go. <laughs> and I, 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 I was very fortunate enough to speak at 
all of the events that I went to. And all of the events were in the US. So I was like, wait a second. I may as well do something with this. Because everyone said to me, okay, what are you, English, Scottish? Are you Australian? Are you Irish? Are you South African? I'm like, look, I'm British. That's it. And people would refer to me as that British guy, that British guy, that British guy. That's British. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. We'll use that one. But at the time, my personal brand, um, when I got rid of my agency, the digital agency, to focus on podcasting fully, I was kind of doing a little bit of um, kind of businessy, consulting, startupy sort of stuff through my personal brand. And it was Andrew and Preet actually that said to me, "Dude, uh, you just you're the best at podcasting. Everyone wants to talk to you about podcasting. Why do you even talk about this other stuff?" I was like, "You, you are clever people. Fair play." <laughs> So that's when I adopted this, that British podcast guy thing. And nice. the, the, the unseen benefit, so to answer the second part of that question, was that I've always struggled with being the personal brand because it's always me on stage. Like we've spoken together a few times. Um, I, I'm on thousands of podcasts. I've done a thousand and a beyond episodes of my own shows. So people were starting to get a little confused with, wait a minute, okay, this is Mark. Like, what does he do? Is he some coach, a consultant? Like, what does this kid do? And then what's this software company, Rebel Base Media? What do these guys do? So it's massively benefited my brand, like I said earlier, when I said, look, it's just markaskwith.com. And it says straight away, CEO, founder, Rebel Base Media, that British podcast guy. So the, the way it's benefited my business, number one, is pure niching. People now come to me just for podcast stuff, which is perfect. And number two, it's... It's taken away all that mystery of, wait a second, am I buying from Mark? Am I buying from Rebel Base Media? What am I doing? Like, you're a Captivate user. Captivate is by Rebel Base Media, and it's you and I that have talked about it. It's, that's a very simple and logical thing. Um, so that's a huge lesson that I learned a few years ago is just that clarity in conversation. You know, you've got to have brand clarity. It's, it's really easy to overcomplicate things, and it, you know, it actually feels better to overcomplicate things. Being simplistic is really uncomfortable. So that's a huge lesson that I've learned, dude. Oh, I can totally resonate. That really resonates with me in that the amount of times over the years that I've sat down pointlessly and written out like overcomplicated crap that I don't need to write out where I could just go, I'm going to do this simple thing and do it really well. Um, so I, I totally get that. That's such a good point. The, the overcomplicated stuff feels better sometimes because you feel like you need to be busy or you feel like you need some big complex task or tip or trick or hack or, or whatever it may be. But simplicity wins sometimes. Mark, I'm going to interrupt proceedings here. We are going to play one of my favorite games. It is the five-second rule. Have you ever played it before? I have not. Have you ever heard of it before? The only five second rule that I've heard of is when you pick food back up off the floor. <laughs> That's the 10 minute rule. God. <laughs> okay. Well, the rules are simple. I have 10 cards here. Each of these cards have a statement on them. It might be something like name three types of bird. You have to give me an answer within five seconds. So I'll read the statement out. You've then got five seconds to give me your answer. If you get it right, you get a point. If you don't, you don't get a point and you're up against all of your fellow guests. First question is not part of the game. Would you like to go for the yellow cards or the red cards? The yellow ones are slightly harder. Uh, we'll, we'll go for the yellow ones then. Why go not? The we'll yellow. keep the stakes high. Okie doke. Are you ready? Let's do this. Okay. Name three things a doctor does to you at the surgery. Makes you wait, tells you off for eating too many eggs, and prescribes medicine. Nice. That was quick. A good start. Name three rock bands. Bon Jovi, Aerosmith, Journey. Wow. Name three things you might find in a handbag. Lipstick, purse, mobile phone. That was uh, too fast to, <laughs> to be general knowledge. Name three charity or good cause events. Uh, Race for Life, London Marathon, Great North Run. Wow. Name three breakfast foods. Cereal, toast, and jam. You're doing good. Name three things you put in the car. Golf clubs, kids, petrol. Did you're good at this. Name three animals that can swim. A dolphin, a fish, and a whale. 
Nice. Name three egg laying animals. Okay, so we're going to go platypus, chicken, and duck. Does a, does a platypus lay eggs? No idea. I just made it up. <laughs> right, uh, we're going to go for a quick Google here. Can <laughs> a platypus lay eggs? If it's a mammal, I'm going to kill myself. Not actually on air. A platypus found in Australia is one of the five man- mammal species of that lay eggs. Oh, that is so... Is that, is that actually true? According to livescience.com. Which has got to be accurate because it's on the internet. Wow. You're getting it because it's on the internet. As you say, name three summer outdoor activities. Golf, barbecue, and fishing. Okay, Mark, this is your final question. If you get this, you're the first guest ever to get 10 out of 10 so far. Name three characters or creations in Doctor Who. Uh, Cybermen, Daleks, and Gallifreyans. Wow, he has done it. Mark Asquith, 10 out of 10 on the hard questions. I can't believe I said platypus. What, how did that even come into my head? I know, I, I mean, like a bird, a yeah. chicken, a duck might have been easier, but platypus, it's a great, you know, platypus is a great word, actually. It really is, actually. I think a lot of Australian animals are the best animals. Yeah, I, I would agree. Other than the ones that just try and kill you, which seems to be quite a lot of them. That's a general rule for all animals, I think. <laughs> Stay away from those yeah. guys. <laughs> Let's get back into the questions. I've got a, a question that I've often wondered when I think about you, which is, <laughs> which is probably not the best way to set up a question, <laughs> but it seems like you know absolutely everybody. And when I say that, I'm going to put as well, for people <laughs> listening, you seem to know even inverted commas, the big names in all the different spaces. So how have you built your network? And I know you kind of touched upon this earlier when you said uh, you've built your network the right way. So I'm keen to hear what you meant by that. Um, And how, with that in mind, how have you got to know these big names, even when you weren't well known? Because I think this is maybe something that a lot of people listening will struggle with, which is I'm relatively unknown. Uh, I feel like I, I, I know my stuff. How do I get how do I get the big names to listen to who I am, know who I am, become friends with that people? So what's kind of been your strategy for networking and things in the in the space? It's a really interesting question, man, and something that I get asked a fair bit. And it's there's a couple of sides to this. There's number one, I I know a lot of quote unquote big names because genuinely of being that British podcast guy. You know, you'll get people coming and, and, and asking and talking about these things. And I'm very fortunate enough to you know, to, to, on the professional side of things to like do the writing for entrepreneur.com to, um, to be on various guest shows, to have big guests on my own podcast back in the day and so on and so forth. Like that's all kind of like the obvious stuff that you can put in place yourself. But honestly, the, the biggest thing to realize, and I've always almost accidentally acted like this. I, I never really intended to. And then I realized that it was the reason behind building a great network is that I never really go into relationships wanting anything out of it. Like I've always been very, you know, it's back to that control thing. I don't want to come to you just to take something. You know, I want to get to know you. I want to know about your life. I want to know how it's, how, you know, what it's like moving into your new office and kitting all that out at home. Like I take care of the details. I want to know about you. And that, that is it. But the, the real kicker with that is that that approach I just use with everyone because everyone's a person. Everyone is a person like Chris Brogan, like you want to talk to Chris Brogan, your best thing to do is ask him why Tim Drake's the best Robin versus Dick Grayson, you know? And that's what I'm into. I'm into DC. I'm into Star Wars. We all like things and people are just people. And that's the thing that people forget because we said it earlier, influencer, even quote unquote entrepreneur. I know 50 entrepreneurs that have never seen being an entrepreneur. They just run a plumbing business. Yeah, like It's perfect. Be a plumber. Be damn good at it. Let's not label things. Let's not put labels above their station. You know, So that's the thing to get over is just be around people. And that's the other thing is I've just made sure to be everywhere. Like I, we, we could have put a lot of podcasting products out five years ago that we're only just putting out now. We chose not to because we wanted to be fair and we wanted to go in and learn the industry get to know the people, come at this from a fair perspective as opposed to just, look, 
we're going to come in and take some money out of your industry. That's not fair. Mm. Um, so that's what we do. You know, we treat, uh, and I, I, the rest of the team are the same. You know, we treat people just as people and it doesn't matter who it is. Like one of my earliest guests on the show was Guy Kawasaki. Great guy. Met him a few times and, you know, a lot, a lot of time for him. And he's just, he's just the guy that you see at social media marketing world. Yeah. Um, so that's the key thing is you've got to, you've got to be completely willing to go into a relationship like you would with a friend, like you would if you started dating someone, you wouldn't go in there and take, take, take. That's what people who are just starting out tend to do as an example of that podcasting, right? Chris Ducker, good friend of mine. And he's a, he's a sound guy. We barely talk about business. We talk about whether or not Luke Skywalker should have had a better run in the last Jedi. We talk about what the new star Wars film is going to be like everyone else that wants an intro to him wants to get him on their show so that they can boost the download numbers. Yep. And it doesn't one, it doesn't work. And two, he's not daft. Like he's just, he's a guy, you know? Yep. So, so that's the thing to remember is just go into it. Willing, being willing to give as you would with a normal friend, but be absolutely everywhere. Like I would say for the first year of marketing, Say if you've got a 30 grand budget for your marketing and it might be your own personal savings pot. I see so many people spending it on gurus and spending it on coaching and all sorts of stuff. Get a decent membership. So, you know, something like Funnel Academy or the Membership Guys or Podcast Success Academy, something where it's low level investment, 50 bucks a month, and spend the rest on people. Go out to the events, be around the people, find a way to get over the jet lag quickly and just actually relate to these guys. So that's, that's how I've done it, man. That's so, I, I love that because, you know, it's actually, it's been a personal struggle of mine. I'll, I'll be honest, which is how much money should I be spending on going to all these different conferences? Should it be uh, like, because I, I find that um, there's a, there's maybe a fine line between, well, let, let's relationship building. Let's take relationship building as an example. There's a fight. Going out for a beer that's with yourself, for example, does look like you're just going out for a beer with a mate having fun, right? But, and it can be hard to see the long tail. You know, when people are starting off in business, they want return on investment for, for certain things. So I feel like there's maybe a fine line between that kind of fun, but it's actually serious business development going on at the same time. So thank you so much for... An, breaking it down in terms of actually giving numbers which which is great if you've got a budget spend most of it on going to conferences and meeting people which is great and there's nothing better than sorry to just jump in on that but there's nothing better than if someone says do you know gavin bell someone else saying yeah of course i do Hmm. that's instantly instant testimony yeah and it's that kind of thing that closes deals but also is is a thing is a thing when you start up in, in business, right? Number one, you're not an entrepreneur. You're not. Richard Branson's an entrepreneur, right? He's a good entrepreneur. We aren't. We just make stuff to earn money, to live and enjoy it. That's it. That's not an entrepreneur. That's just someone that works in their business, okay? The reason that I'm saying that is that if you were just going out there to get any client you can, to get Brian Fanzo to endorse your product, to get Andrew and Pete to do X, Y, and Z with your membership, you know, to get Guy Kawasaki or Stelzner or any of those guys to do something. It ain't going to happen because guess what? Everyone's doing that. But at the same time, if I'm a hairdresser, right? And every time this one person comes in, they give me hassle. They never pay on time. They don't like what I do for them, despite continually coming to me and asking for it. What am I going to say? I'm going to say, find a new hairdresser. You are interviewing these people. You would never turn up to someone like Ducker or to you or Andrew and Pete or to me and say, right, let us instantly do business together because you've got a name and a series of Twitter followers and Instagram followers. doesn't mean we're going to do good business together. We could be terrible together. So when you're doing this, you, by proxy of just having a beer, you're actually getting to know whether we're the right people to work together. Mm. And people don't understand that. And how much easier is it to, like, again, Amy Woods is great at this content 10x. How much easier is it for me to just text Amy and say, yo, Amy, got five pieces of repurposing work that need doing, not Googling, 
finding recommendations, Amy pitching for the work, me trying to seek recommendations. I might not work with Amy for four years, three years, two years, one year. But when I do, that conversion is coming like that. It will be instant, you know? You've already made the decision up. And that might be because you had a great time, San Diego, three years ago with Amy in a bar, having a beer and chatting about Star Wars. Exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah, no, if you want to do business with me, just chat Star I was or DC. That's just a little, little tip. <laughs> well, I got. I got to be honest, man. I've never watched Star Wars. I'm sorry if this is the end of our friendship. I don't know what to say about that. You're the second person today that said that. Steve Lazarus from Your London Legacy is like, mate. I need to tell you, I've never seen Star Wars. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm just like my film knowledge overall is just horrendous. So so bad. But Mark, that has been. An absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, and thank you so much for helping make this podcast just happen. Um, so tell everyone where they can find you and tell them a, a little bit about Captivate because Captivate is where this podcast is being hosted. If it wasn't for Captivate, you wouldn't be listening to me in your ears right now. So just give everyone a little, a little blurb who you are, where they can find you and all that great stuff. Well, thank you very much. Listen, man, you're a great host, even though you're, uh, you're just getting into the podcasting game. You've got a natural talent for it, dude. So congrats on the launch. It's, it's a great show, man. Um, so yeah, just, just come along, rebelbasemedia.io. You can get a feel for everything that we do. We've got some free coaching over there. We've got a nice free community. So just jump in that if you're interested in podcasting. Um, and Captivate is the hosting platform, the analytics platform and marketing platform that powers this show. So just click the link in the podcast player and uh, you'll, you'll get sent off to Captivate if you're interested in starting your own show. We'll be around to help. Yep. And if you go to Mark's website, you will see that pod, that British podcasting guy's face, which I've got to say it is, I mean, he's got a great beard, great looking guy. Is it just a great guy? Um, Mark, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, buddy. It's a pleasure. Hey team, me again. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the video version of the podcast. And I hope you took something away from that. Maybe a smile, maybe something of inspiration or maybe an idea came to your mind. Be sure to drop me a comment and let me know what that thing was for you. Now, if you want to listen to more or watch more episodes of the podcast, you can do that here on YouTube or Facebook or head over to Apple Podcasts or the podcasting platform of your choice. Just be sure to hit subscribe, leave us a little review and a five-star rating, and I will love you forever. See you in the next episode.